playing R&B. He's playing gospel music, independent and mainstream artists. He's talking news, celebrity, politics, and current events. Some of it serious, some with a little comedy mixed in. He's doing call-in, interview, shout-out, and he's doing it all just for you. Join Terry Price for your favorite music, current events, and lots of laughs. Yo, the Terry Price Show. 
reporting live from Harare in Zimbabwe. You tune into the Terry Price Show. Let's go. It is Jesus music. 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 Revelation music. 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 Jesus Christ music. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I hope he's getting an hour ahead of the day. Late. 
<laughs> no, I got you, man. I was just sitting around here. Uh, I was really just looking through your uh, your bio and everything, man. I was impressed, man. I was impressed with the music video. Um, and you're originally from uh, St. Louis, right? Yeah, I'm originally from St. Louis. Yeah, man, I was just impressed, man. I was like, dang, man. I was like, this dude really... I mean, you really got it together, man. I mean, the package is just... It just caught my attention, man, because normally when people send me stuff, sometimes they forget to put their name on their music, and I'll be, like, trying to look for it, and I don't know, man. It was just, it was just, it was just well put together, man. I was just impressed on how you uh, how you got everything set up, your interview. You're always looking sharp. So I was like, hey, man. I, I said, this I that is me all the time, man. He said... It, 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 it's just like being a good cook. Oh, yeah. everybody, everybody, who, everybody who can, you know, they eat their food. But so, if the presentation ain't good, nobody will ever know how good of a cook you are because they'll never eat the food. Because people, first of all, they eat with their eyes first. And so when somebody bring a plate out, they look at it and people eat with their eyes. Some people eat with their nose first, too, so they'll smell it. And, right, and right. If, you know, if they don't look good or smell good, they're not going to digest the food to even see if it tastes good. And that's the same thing with anything else. You know, the package ain't put together, but the presentation ain't good. And they'll never digest how good your music is because they'll never even listen to it or even look at it per se. Because they ain't never even about what it is. They are, like you said. So I spend my money, man, really in the presentation, the marketing, and promotion. You know, once you know you got a good product, that's what you pretty much do. You just make sure it's presentable so that people will go ahead and consume it and then go ahead and eat of it. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah, how you yeah. get heard. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. Yeah, man. I, I, I mean, it just really caught my attention. I was like, mind bobble. I was like, um, now don't get me wrong, man. I got some good brothers and sisters that, you know, I did interviews with and stuff like that, man. But sometimes, you know, especially in the gospel world, we get a little good, you know, get a little too relaxed or whatever. And we don't think about how, how important the presentation is supposed to be like. I was able to go, everything that you sent me, the links, I was able to go boom, 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 you know, like real quick and and check you out, check your music, your music videos. Because, you know, I like to take my time, man. I don't like to just do interviews. I like to just really, um, I like to do interviews with good artists, you know what I'm saying, that I, that I feel like have some potential, you know, to really make something happen out there. So, um, so man, it, 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 yeah, it was just a good thing, man. <laughs> appreciate that, bro. I really do. Oh, no problem. God, I, appreciate, I appreciate even, even you know, the consideration. Uh, like I said, I know sometimes, I, I tell people all the time, I can be I can be a little uh, persistent, you know what I mean? I, and, I, and sometimes it costs the borderline of being, getting on people nervous, but at the same time, that's how I was taught, man. Sometimes you got to be on the person's mind so much that they can't forget about you. That's even when you're looking for a job or anything, you know. So, you know, I apologize. I apologize if I was, you know, you know, I'd text you and say, hey, man, well, did you look at it? Did you check it out? Did you listen to it? Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't feel like that, man, because uh, by me being from California, man, that's that's how we roll, man. We, I, I feel like this, man, if you're really serious about your craft and what you're doing, you you going, man, you going to, like, really just get on that person's nerves until that person just say, either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it, then you can walk away right. feeling like, hey, I did my part. You see what I'm saying? I feel like right. that too. Right. Yeah, man. So uh, let me go ahead and let's do it like this. Okay. This music video, man, I mean, you just got some, man. Man, boy, this music video is just a trip, man, with all that Pittsburgh on. The colors. Oh man, I'm a diehard. I'm a diehard Steelers fan now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you gotta see my truck, man. My wife is actually in my truck right now. Uh, uh, she she pulled the uh the switcheroo on me this morning. So I'm like, man, I need you to get the brakes fixed on my car. I said, okay, cool. So I'm riding around in the other car right now, doing the honey do this, getting everything taken care of. Just got the brakes changed. Yeah, man, the truck, my recording studio, everything. People like, man, you love the Steelers, don't you, bro? Yeah, you love the Steelers. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. I look, I say, oh, you're a Steelers fan. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, well, there's only one team in NFL, man. There's only one team that's relevant, man. That's the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Everybody else really don't even matter. Oh, yeah, 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 man. But uh, let's go ahead, man, since we, uh, 
basically broke the ice, man. Let's go ahead and get the interview going. And uh, let's see. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I got that ready. Okay, let's see. All right. All right, man. Okay. All right, I think I'm ready, man. Okay. All right, then. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Terry Price Show live on 3W's.TheTerryPriceShow.com. We are located out here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And man, I got a special guest. First time on the Terry Price Show. His name is Justin Shaw. Y'all show him some love, everybody. All right, all right, all right. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to start it off like this, man. We're going to start it off rough. All right, then. Justin Shaw, welcome to the Terry Price Show. How you doing, brother? Oh, man, I'm blessed, man. Can't complain at all. Won't complain. All right. All right, man. Hey, man, it's, it's nice, um, you know, breaking bread with you, brother, man. Um, man, I love your work. I love what you're doing, man. And um, I want to let everybody know, man, I know my brother, man, he's from St. Louis. I don't know how you feel about St. Louis moving to L.A. I don't know. How you feel about that, brother? <laughs> man, that's what I love. I love St. Louis. I love my home. I'm actually, I'm actually currently staying in Arkansas right now, man. In uh, Thursday, Arkansas. Uh, but man, it, it's, it's a big transition going from the from the big city, man, to a little small location. You know, but it's a lot peaceful. It's peaceful out here, man. It's slow. You know, you used to the fast moving and fast pace and you know, moving to the country is kind of, you know, at first it ain't, ain't really what you expect and what, what you really want. But you know, once you get here, settle down, you say, like, shoot, ain't nobody get killed me. So it, Oh yeah, yeah, man. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, man. And so, uh, man, you said you was married, man. You got a family, man. That's a good thing, man. I've always said, man, we brothers in the gospel, man. We gotta, we gotta get us a wife, man, cause, uh, man, it, it's so much going on out there, man. We gotta, we gotta get yoked up with someone out there. So, uh, man, that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, man, my wife, my kids, man, my beautiful wife, Shay, she's just work right now, working hard. Like I told her, she, she's a workaholic, she's gonna sit down, you know, and I love that about her. I'm gonna just have one of those women who wants you to do everything for me, take care of me, everything, you know. My wife, in fact, she won't let me do a lot of stuff. She won't let me do a lot of stuff. She won't let me do a lot of stuff. That's the good thing about having that faith, man, and having that real thing where, you know, I can share the love with me, and everybody can feel good. I love my wife, I love my boy, children, 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 I'm so glad we linked up, man. I'm just like, man, I'm I'm encouraging everybody that's tuning into the Terry Price Show. Uh, man, I will have those links and websites and information available. Man, y'all got to check out my brother, Justin Shaw. Man, he is showing up and showing out. And we thank the Most High and Christ for that, man. So, man, you got to tell us, man, when did you first start doing this? Man, when you started singing, were you young when you started singing? Or you waited till you got to be a teenager? Man, I was, man, I, I, I've been singing since I can remember. I'll say it like that. I, I started singing, man, uh, with my mother and my sister. This group when I was five years old. And she taught me how to play the, my mom taught me how to play the drum when I was five. Uh, my grandfather, he was apostle. He started 14 churches all over the country. So we always were going and with him and establishing ministries. And we were the praise team. So we always had to, you know, sing and pretty much do the praise and worship at the church. So I started singing, man, at, at a young age, five years old. So I've been singing since I can really remember. Oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. So, um, so basically, man, you just uh, like did your your parents or someone in your family encourage you to just kind of keep pushing what you was doing to keep singing, or you just decided on your own this is what I wanted to do? I knew for a while, man. I knew singing was really what I wanted to do because you couldn't shut me up. Everything I did was singing and beat on pops. You know, I was always I was getting pots and sit out on the pots and beat on pots, so I thought I was gonna be that musical kid. So like I said, at five I started playing the drum for the church, and then at thirteen I 
so I take it around on the keyboard because we didn't have a we didn't have a musician. I was just a drummer. You know, we was on the old, old churches with, with the stump clap. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. We had the drums, so we didn't have a keyboard. So you know, I taught my brother how to play the drums, and I started taking around on the keyboard. I started playing everything and see, I made everybody sing all the songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man! <yeah. laughs> but I'm saying I would tap to see. No, this way you're gonna be singing. You can't sing this shit. You know, I thought I was, you know, like a lot of musicians, transposing, but now, you know, I'm playing in every key and, you know, producing and, you know, steady singing. So I knew for a long time music is what I wanted to do. Right, right, right. Well, man, who else in your family sings, man? I know I know Big Mama, somebody in in your household, everybody. in your family sings, man. <laughs> everybody. Listen, mom, my aunt. Um, my sister, uh, pretty much yeah, everybody. Well, I can't say everybody. My brother, that's yeah, you know, my brother. They got the drawing. They right. can draw you. They can stand there. But uh, you know, pretty much the whole family, all of my aunt, all of you know, my mom, on my side of the family, on my mom's side and my dad's side of the family. So we just a musical family. Man. Wow. Okay, man. That's cool. That's cool, man. So, uh, man, do you got any? Uh, I, 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 I'm gonna put it like this, man. Who are your musical inspirations today? In this day and time, everybody asks me that who's my musical inspiration, but I would have to go all the way back to when I was a kid. The vocals that I like used to listen to a lot, and that's why my music kind of doesn't really sound like a lot of people's music. Right. My influences were kind of different, but I used to listen to like Mint Condition a lot. Stokely was one of my favorite male vocals. Oh yeah, uh, you know I know that you know singing you know singing gospel. Everybody like Stokely. Why would he say Stokely? But a lot of my influences only the only influence I can say that was really gospel was really Dawkins and Dawkins. I grew up listening to Eric and Anton Dawkins, man, and uh, those were kind of like my influences. I love the sound that they had. You know, I used to listen to a little uh, commission, but at the same time, you know, a lot of my the singers that I listened to, because I used to have a struggle with wanting to sing R&B music and sing gospel, and until God, you know, until I really had an encounter with God and God would show me the sound, it wasn't a problem with the sound, but with who you edified and what you talked about, you right. know, with the product. So, uh, like, I, like I said, man, you know, it's the different vocals that I used to listen to, like Tank and Tyrese, all those different people like that, man. But, uh, that's why my sound is more so influenced with, a, with, with kind of an R&B sound. But the difference between me and a lot of them is that I honestly and earnestly, you know, live this life and I love the Lord. And so even though that's my sound, I don't like the church, I don't want the church to... To, to look down or frown up on the sound because you know I heard a woman say on the radio a couple of days ago she said these young people are trying to force us to, to cater to or listen to or accept their music when they you know I understand the old school roots that's good the old school stuff that rock is great but, but you know the, the audience that I'm trying to reach and, and the generation that I'm trying to reach is the next, is the next generation that generation that, that God is really sick because even in, even in scripture I was reading the other day where he talked about how he allowed the children of Israel to wander in the wilderness he wanted all of them to die off, you know, because they weren't, they weren't living a certain way, they weren't accepting the principles of God, and so they wanted that, he wanted that next generation to be the generation that, that taught their children, so what we're trying to do is, man, reach this generation, so it's just, you know, and reach them on that level, so when they listen to it, because if you listen to all of my songs, my songs are straight Bible, my song, I don't even call my music, and it's a, it's a, it's a phrase going, going rapid in the, in the gospel industry called inspirational, they say inspirational, my music is not inspirational, my music is gospel, because when you listen to my lyrics, my lyrics are straight Bible. That's right, that's right. So I give them a sound, I give them that sound, but I'm giving them a straight Bible because I am a minister as well. I'm a licensed minister, so I give straight Bible even with the sound. It's not just a nice beat and a melody, but I'm going to give you the word in the song. So when you listen to it and rehearsing it over and over in your spirit, because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So while you're listening to the word, and you're playing it over and over again, loving the beat and the melody and the sound, you're getting the word in you, and you're steady being encouraged through the words and the lyrics, so. All right, but you're right about that. And since you told me you was a minister, then I might as well go ahead and, and move from Justin Shaw to minister. But minister, I want to ask you this, man. Um, I really want to ask you this. I want to really just break the ice on this. Um, is it is it wrong for the gospel or with gospel artists to come up with some type of pat platform where uh, they can uh, have some type of, um, I guess, R and B flavor? Because I look at it like this, you know. Um, in the gospel world, you know, we just have gospel music, but we don't have nothing that we can cater to our woman. Like, uh, since you're married, I can say this, uh, you know, if you used to make love to your wife, you know, you're not going to put on Kurt Franklin and the family. You're going to put on something smooth to get the mood started. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I don't, I don't, 
I don't feel like it's wrong because somebody told me that before. They said, man, actually, I was at a, I was at the Me Too Music concert. Me Too Music at the record label. I'm right. We had a Me Too Music concert with one of the artists. And uh, they said, man, you know, we was rehearsing and all of the artists were singing each other's background. And so when they got to singing my music, they said, man, your music just made me just want to stand sometimes. You know, it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I'm going to make that kind of music because of love. God is love. If you don't have God uh, anything, you can't love nobody effectively. You know, that I if you have all of these spiritual gifts and all these other things and don't have charity, it's not. And so, you know, I, I look at it as it's, it's nothing wrong with them wanting that sound. I'm going to say it like this. But you can't become so much of the world. Right. That you have no effect on the world. You know what I mean? And so, it's no, there's nothing wrong with you having the sound and there's nothing wrong with you catering to that because Paul did say, I became all things to all people that I might win them. But he wasn't talking about right. them. You see what I'm saying? And so, what's going on and what's happening in the gospel industry is um, so many people are trying to be so much like the world right. that you're losing the effect. And a lot of people are looking at you like, if they still doing that, if they can do this, then, you know, I wasn't looking for me getting saved. And so there are some things that I promise God. So this way, right. I, won't, I won't be like a lot of these cats that's in the industry. I put three things. I promise God. I said, God, I'll never go and stick my vessel in another one or other than my wife ever again. God, if I do, you can kill me dead. Now, a lot of my friends and a lot of family members and people who hear that, they be like, why would you say that? Like, why would you say something like that? What, what, what I did was I didn't want to keep the door open. See, a lot of people do stuff and say stuff. They, you, might, you know, they might say, well, I ain't going to ever go back and do that again or, or whatever, but they'll leave the door open. And so what I did was everywhere in Scripture where I thought that they wanted to, to make to make to win some major battles in their life and they wanted to accomplish some major things in their life, they made God's vows and they stuck to those vows. And when they stuck to the vows, then God honored it and God saw opening doors and making things happen in their life. Right. I promise God I'll never be one of these artists who go out here and I don't want to bring a reproach to the, to the house of God. I don't want to bring a reproach to the church, not just to the church, but I don't want to bring a reproach to my name. So I made God that vow because what will happen is if, I, if my allegiance and, and, and my dedication is only to my wife or solely to my wife, and I'll be like a lot of these cats in the industry who go out here and they allow themselves to up with a whole bunch of cute faces and wiggles and because a woman walk by and smelling like fruits and berries and watermelons and peaches, then you know they slip and fall. Well, I'm not going to do that because I promise God, listen God, I put my life on the line. Lord, if I ever do this, God, please kill me dead. Take me. And then I promise God, I said, God, because everybody knows, even in my testimony, I go all over the world, all over the country, on radio, wherever, and let people know. I, I'm not one of these artists who are out here just looking for money, trying to sell records for money, because the, cause my motto is this, and this is for my record company and everything. Right. Getting money is one thing, but putting God first is everything. So I promise God I'd never go back and sell drugs ever again, because I used to be this real big drug dealer. I used to have so much money, man, that I used to go in stores and, you know, not have to ask the price to take my family on all kinds of different trips and different places and things like that. So I'm like, Paul, man, I know what it is to a base, and I know what it is to a bound. I've had a lot of money, but I know what it is to have to trust God. So I promise God I'd never go and do anything unnecessarily for money, whether it's whether it's hustling again, selling drugs, or whether it's just taking a whole bunch of concerts and stuff where God's not telling me to go all for a dollar, trying to chase a dollar. So me, with me, my music is really about ministry. And so yeah. this is ministry, and I understand we definitely got to get paid, you know, for, you know, this is a crap, whatever. You, you know, you want to make money off of, but at the same time, if God tells me to go somewhere and the people ain't got the money to pay me, and he know there's people that need to be saved and need to hear my ministry, then I'm going to go if God releases me and tells me to go there. You know what I mean? So it's not all about money for me in this industry. For me, it's really about ministry and making sure that people get saved. As I tell God, I don't want to go nowhere if, somebody, if nobody's getting saved and nobody's life is getting changed. I don't even really want to go if that's not going to be the case. Then the third and final thing I told God, I'll never go and defile my temple ever again. I'll never put anything, any substances in my body, God, or do anything to this one vessel that I have to use to carry the gospel around. I'll never do anything to tear this body down on purpose, God. So God, whatever it is, I said, if I do, God, you can kill me dead. I made God those thousands of those promises because regardless of what my sound is, I want people to understand that I truly live what I sing. I truly live what I say because so many people play with God now and so many people straddle the fence. So many people do stuff to make money that you you can rarely tell what's genuine and what's not. That's true. That's true. You can't tell the difference from uh, clean and unclean. So, yeah, you're right, right. on there, brother. Uh, man, that's deep, man. That's deep, man. So uh, uh, that was kind of touching what you said, man. You know, you used to be a uh, you know, an ex dope dealer and everything, man. And for our listeners out there, man, that might be tuning in, man, we might got some dope dealers 
that might be still still slinging today, man. Uh, tell us, brother, what what made you just like just give it all up, man? Just really just completely turn yourself around and just give up that lifestyle. Well, I knew since I was a kid, man, I was supposed to preach. I knew since I was five years old, I was supposed to preach. Even when I was a kid, my brothers would be outside swinging from trees, doing back and forth, playing he man and she were in the front yard, whatever. Right. You know, and I was in the house with the Bible. I had the tape recorder, and I was seeing, I used to mimic my grandfather. Cause my grandfather, I told you previously in the interview, that my grandfather was apostle and started 14 churches all over the country. So I used to mimic how he used to preach and different things like that. And so uh, six, six months before my grandfather passed, he ended up dying with cancer two years ago. Ago. And that's when I sincerely got saved, actually two years ago. I used to go to church, man, sit on the keyboard. I was the minister of music at the church, but I was the biggest dope dealer in the area. You know what I mean? Okay. And so on Sundays, I would sit on the keyboard and on the organ and, and be looking at my phone at the same time, looking down and seeing my phone go off, and they're saying $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 waiting on me. They what time to get out of church. I'll let me, bro, when you get out of church, get with me, bro. You know what I mean? All right, let me, you get with me. I'll let me, hit me up. And so in my mind, the whole time I'm in church, I'm like, Man, Pastor, please don't preach no too much no longer. I was the choir don't sing another song. I was, don't nobody shout because I don't want to play no shout music or nothing. Cause I got to go get this bread. Right. And so, right. you know, up until two years ago, I used to joke with people all the time and tell them, you know, if something never happened to my grandfather, you know, that I would probably be preaching the gospel. I'm going to try to make this real short, man. I, I told I used to tell him I, I, I'd probably be preaching the gospel. And so my grandfather got sick. He, you know, got stricken with cancer. Cancer was all through his body. And the only thing my grandfather ever preached, I mean, for years, he hadn't went to the doctor in like 20-something years, man. You know what I mean? But just to get some trash cleaned out of his ears because he did the asphalt ceiling, uh, the steel coat and stuff like that. And so that was the only time he went to the emergency room. Other than that, man, all he preached and talked about was faith. All he you know, he preached sermons like, uh, you don't need a doctor, your prescription's already been filled at Calvary. Or he preached a sermon say, if you, uh, if you can't find where it's written, you know, or, or uh, if you can't fix it, take it back to the manufacturer. Different sermons, like, I can remember those titles vaguely because all he talked about was faith. So, my grandfather was going to die. I thought he was going to get healed based off of, you know, the stuff that he had went all over the country, laid his hands on the sick, blind eyes, some open people get up out of wheelchairs. And so I was upset with God when he passed. I was like, God, how is it that you let this man die? You know, they went all over the country, laid hand on the sick, they recovered how he let his body be stricken with cancer. So I was kind of upset with God. But uh, the night my grandfather died, man, I was in my recording studio and I was sitting in my studio man, and I was crying. And I got my head on, on my arms and I'm crying. And God just called me, man, and he showed me something. He asked, he had showed me a dream six years before my grandfather passed, man. And I'm I'm a barber, so I was cutting hair. And in this dream, I was lining up my face. And my grandfather came around to the in the restroom, and he said, "Grandpa, I need to use the restroom." So he left out the I left out the restroom, let him come in. And some told me to go back and really check on him because I started struggling to put this suit coat jacket on. But when I went back to check on him in his dream, he passed out in my arms. Right, right. He starts shaking. He starts shaking and foaming at the mouth. And he's foaming at the mouth, and he's shaking. I take off running with him throughout the house, and I'm running with him. And I never forget. I woke up and I. I was, I was crying so hard that when I woke up, you know what I mean, that like almost, I was crying from the dream, but at the same time, I'm, I'm crying for real when I woke up. And so uh, that night, when God, well, after he died, I she interpreted this dream for me. He said, I showed you six months ago that your grandpa was going to pass. He said, you remember in that dream? He said, when you, when you were lining up your face, that signified it was time to be prepared. Not only for your grandfather's death, but be prepared for who I was about to take you to. He said, when you when you came back to the restroom and your grandfather passed out of your arms, that signified the transferring of the anointing from his life to your life. He said, when you took off one of your grandfather through the house, they sit inside and not trying to get to carry the map. But man, I was tore up, bro. I was messed up when he had turned me three and something. So the next day, in my grandfather's funeral, a man came all the way from Jackson, Tennessee, by the name of Nathan Goodbye, and he preached my grandfather's funeral. The title of the son was called, Who Was Going to Carry the Map? Dude, I shouted at the hell. I got a photo to the world because I shouted because when I heard God speak uh -huh. at 3 o'clock in the morning when I was in the record studio. So at that point, man, it was almost like an immediate turnaround for me. You know, I was still struggling with smoking weed. Now, I, you know, I stopped selling though. I got up at the church that, that, that next Sunday, and I told the church, I said, listen, I'm in the music, been the biggest drug dealer in the area for the last five years. And now, you know, I want to confess my sins. I want to come out. I'm going to come clean. I've been stagnating with the worship and the flow of service because it's been hard to worship because my life has been as ragged and I've been polluting the atmosphere. And so I want y'all to understand, you know, I apologize to y'all. I apologize to my family for stagnating y'all. And so it was immediate change from, from us. And I told them, hey, we got slabs on top of slabs right now in the trap house. But listen, I'm going to expose this whole, and listen, I'm going to live my life safe. Now, because 
because I smoked so much weed every day and I had so much weed, I was still I was still addicted to it. And so I still had an addiction for like about two more months after that. But you know, now I'm clean big people for weed for like almost a year and a half now. You know, been walking with God and so like I said, man, God is really God has really opened up a lot of doors for me when I when I decided to actually live right and actually live this, this, this life for real. So he actually gave me the words to a song. The words of the song said things that got so bad that I almost stopped believing. In church Sunday after Sunday because I was going for no reason. I was singing my song, going through the motions. One foot in, one foot out, hoping nobody, nobody would notice. I just lost my focus and got wrapped up in the streets. I made a whole lot of money, but it couldn't buy me peace. Having problems at home, steady fighting with my baby. All this fussing and cussing is about to drive me crazy, but I got a revelation and I heard the Spirit say, whenever you get real, everything will be okay. So God will show me, as soon as you get real with me and start playing with me, then everything will be straight. Oh, yeah, 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 most definitely, brother. And so, and so that's what happened, man. And so that's where my transformation came from. That's what really made me turn around and actually start living living upright before God. Right, right, right. Wow, man, that's... <laughs> man, you said a whole lot, man. Um, So, man, how many, like, I know you've been doing your music for a while and everything, man. Where, where's a, a, a most... Well, I'll put it to you like this, man. Uh, what is the most place you would like to perform at? Mm, I mean, dude, I, I, I can't really I can't really say where I would like to perform and I say whatever doors open up and whatever opportunities come, my prayer every day is God open up doors of opportunity for me and my family. So wherever God opens the door and wherever he sends me to, whether it's whether it's Australia, doors will start opening Australia, doors will start opening in South Africa. Matter of fact, I'll be in Alaska next month on the twenty eighth or next month doing a concert at the University of Alaska. And so God is starting to open doors. You know what I mean? And so Wherever God sends me, that's where I'll go, you know, and it's got to be sincerely God sending me. I don't want to be saying I want to go somewhere and then get there, you know, and God didn't have me to go. And then it's just a chaos, a whole bunch of chaos. So uh, wherever God sends me, that's where I want to go. Already, 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 man. Well, man, everybody, y'all heard it first right here on the Terry Price Show, live on 3 com. Man, with this talk radio, got my boy Justin Shaw, man, putting it down. Called it in all the way from Arkansas, y'all. They call it Arkansas out here, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, they call it Arkansas. <laughs> well, man, so everybody, man, y'all welcome uh, to get hit me up, 318-990-8375. Talk to my boy, Justin Shaw, in the building, man, doing his thing. And um, I'm just playing this music video, uh, You Don't Know, man. And since I'm playing that, Man, tell us about this hit single, You Don't Know, man. What's going down with this song? Man, You Don't Know pretty much inspired from a whole life story, man. See, a lot of people will look at it. And it's just like when any of us, a lot of people will look at you or me or, right. or anybody or whoever it is, and they don't understand your story. They wouldn't know your story because they see you smiling and you going day to day to your job. And because you ain't pulling your hair out or blowing your brains out or overdose no pills, they really think, you you know, you got it all together. But if your walls and your house could talk and they could tell a story, they would probably say, nah, you really don't know. You don't know the whole story. And so a lot of people, when they look at me, they don't know that, you know, at five years old, I was molested by my female babysitter. They don't know when my mother was two weeks pregnant with me. My father went to the penitentiary and was in the penitentiary for 21 years. They don't know that my mother was on crack cocaine for 17 years and I had to go and live with my grandparents. You know what I mean? Which, you know, was nothing and, and, and nothing in my life was ever a mistake. And so even, even on my album, now that I'm talking to you, if you, when people get my album and they listen to these songs because they've heard the testimony over the airwaves, now they'll understand what a lot of these songs mean. Just like the title of the album, Going to Get the Glory. There's, God showed me, nothing that you've gone through was ever a mistake. It was all by design. You don't understand it right now, but I promise it will all manifest in time. All of the hurt, all of the tears, all the pain that you've had to endure, all the sleepless nights, arguments, and fights, like looking for your good, I'm sure. And I know you might not understand it, but the plans I have for you are good. You might go through some unpleasant circumstances, but I'll be right here to guide you through it. Don't be confused, because you might not understand it right now, but I'm going to get the glory. So when I, when I sing You Don't Know, You Don't Know is pretty much saying you don't know the whole story. If I tell you the whole story, you probably wouldn't be able to stomach the story. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so you would you would know at 10, 11 years old when we stayed in Anchorage, Alaska with my grandparents. My grandfather's wife didn't like my mother, so she put us out, and we had to live in a shelter for a year in Anchorage, Alaska, thousands of miles away from any other family that we knew. You know what I mean? You would know that stuff. You right. see what I'm saying? So. I mean, just looking at me, people were like, oh, man, wow, what's his story? You know, you, that's why I said my brother has a saying he says a lot of times, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Wow, that's deep. That's deep, Minister Shaw. 
Man, everybody, I got to check my brother out, man. Like I said, we're going to be really just blowing this song up. You don't know, man. You don't know. You don't know his life story, y'all. He's come a mighty long way. Uh, man, I'm very appreciative to have this man on to the Terry Price Show. And, uh, man, we're doing this live exclusive interview, talk radio, man, no holds bar. Uh, we're just holding it down. Uh, man, I want to ask you this question, man. Uh, if you wouldn't. I mean, if you weren't doing music, man, I mean, what would you be doing? Man, I love cutting hair, man. I, I like getting everybody swag together. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, I love having people. I love you having your line and crispy and having fresh cuts. And, you know what I mean? When people see you, they like, man, who cut your hair? You know, so that's that's what I do, man. I'm a barber. You know, I had a clothing, I had a clothing store for a while, man. So I want to get back in the, into the fashion and stuff like that. So that's that's what I would possibly be doing, man. Fashion and uh, you know, barbering because my wife is a licensed beautician as well. So we like, you know, do hair, different things like that. So. Oh man, that's good, man. That's good, man. Out there in Arkansas, y'all, man. When I, when I come out that way, man, I'm gonna make sure I get all taped up, man. You gotta hook me up, bro. I got you. I got you. I got you. If, you, if you watch that video, if you look at that video, look at your kids be and on the video. Hey, hey, I was looking at that. I was like, man, somebody hit that boy up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doc, yeah. Hey, Doc, man, I got you. Hey, Doc, man, I got to stay crispy, man. The lady told me at church Sunday, she was like, why every time your line and just look like it got powder on it? Did you, did you wash your face or something? I said, man, it's called a razor line. <laughs> That's called a razor line, pal. Hey, I was, I was looking at, hey, I was looking at that. I said, I said, man, who lined this brother up? I mean, man, it, it looked good, bro. It looked good. <laughs> if you look at all the interviews and everything, everybody watching the interview, like, man, your line is so crispy, bro. Man, especially on that sit down interview, man. We got on the Chicago ad. I was like, man. I said, man, somebody looking this brother up, man. But now that you tell me you're a, a barber, professional barber at that, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. man, this dude. I wish he was out here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, man. <laughs> hey, man, y'all get me down there, man. I, 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 I get down there. Hey, man, hey, and you know what? You're not too far from us, man. We definitely got to get you booked come out here, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure you like probably six or eight hours away. I'm just guessing. I've been through uh, Arkansas on my way to Atlanta, man. So, um, man, we definitely got to uh, get you out here, man. Yo, the music, man, is the bomb. I'm liking everything that you do. Loving your spirit. Uh, man, you're a man of God, man. And you just, um, you know, you just telling them like it is, man. You're not holding back. You're not sugarcoating nothing. you like, hey, man, if God can change my life, he can change your life, man. So, and that's what, that's what it's about. Yeah, I had a fucking tell me. I had one of my my, my musical directors, matter of fact, named Patrick Washington. Bro, I, I, he, Patrick killed me all the time. He said, "Bro, I don't, I ain't gonna even lie to you, bro. If I was making that kind of money, I don't think I'd have been able to quit." <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yeah. like a joke. Yeah. It's a end of joke. He said, "Bro, if I was making that kind of money, I, you know, it's just to the point, man. When you see a sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars a week, bro, pop it after you pay everybody at the cap and different stuff like that, man. You like, nah." I, and one day, I'll never forget, man, I set up, we the Western Central Reservoir, me, my wife, and my kids, and I sat there because my phone was going off, steady blowing up, steady buzzing, and I'm looking down at it, and there's money waiting on me, and then I'm looking at my family, and in my mind, I want to rush my family to eat so I can go get this, to go get the money, and so I felt so bad that I wanted to rush them for the money, the tears are coming out of my eyes. And my wife, back, she asked me, she said, baby, what's wrong? My wife tell you the same story. You know, I can't make this up. This ain't Stephen King's look at it like this. My right. wife said, baby, uh, what, what, what's wrong? I said, hey, baby, you're going to have to pray for me. Right. I said, because all them times when you think my phone be ringing, you think it's another woman. Come on, let's be for her. Now, I want to see a man grabbing his phone and steady looking at his text messages going off. First thing a black woman going to think, I'm just going to be for real. She's like, who is this chick calling your phone? Right. That's right. You know what I mean? So I told her, I said, baby, well, it don't be no woman calling my phone. I said, baby, I'm addicted to money. I said, I need you to pray for me because I'm addicted to money. You know what I mean? And my wife looked at me and she said, baby, I'm going to pray and ask God to release it. And so, you know, like I said, man, a couple months after that, that's when that's when this transition came about. And God really just made sure. God just made me some, some, a lot of progress in my life, man. It was, I know it was God because I couldn't have done it on my own, man. Saying that kind of money, man, like I said, 
I couldn't have done it on my own. And right. so I know if God can get me clean and God can clean me up, and God can take a sinner like me, a rich and done like me, man, and clean me up, man, he can clean up anybody. If he can take a, a, a whore monger, you know, because a lot of times we talk we talk about women, we talk about how, how whores they are, but man, I was whores, man, like on my album. I said, dude, I should have been dying with an STD, but I started right. thinking, God, you must have had your hands on me. Because I know I was sleeping around, I know I was doing all kinds of stuff that I ain't had no business doing, but you know, and I'm not ashamed to tell it, because a lot of people always say, oh, God brought me and God delivered me, but where did he deliver Deliver you from. I want to know that you have some struggle. The granddaddy used to tell me like this, man. He used to say, how can you tell somebody about a mountain if you never climbed a mountain? And how can you tell somebody about a valley experience and you never had one? So I tell people where I came from. I let people know exactly where God delivered me from. And I let them know, hey, it ain't nothing that you've done that's so ratchet or so bad that God can't take you and still use you. I'm working on a sermon right now called, Are You a Credible Witness? And a lot of times in the courtroom, they, the witnesses, they want the witness to have a clean background, but God, for a credible witness, for God, God wants your background, he wants your background as dirty as possible, so you'll be able to be a credible witness, man. Right. That's right, brother. You, I mean, you on point on that, man. That makes a whole lot of sense to what you just said, man. And, man, for all um, young audience and for anybody that's tuning into the show, man, uh, before you go, man, what's the word of inspiration that you can leave with an audience, man? And all I can tell the audience, man, is, Put God first, man. Put God, put God first and foremost. Put God first in your life. And I know that that's cliche for a lot of people to say. God said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I know it's easy for a lot of people to say, you know, that they have a relationship with God because I pray every night. Don't judge me. That's the stuff you hear people saying all the time. But one of my favorite scriptures, and this is what I want to leave with everybody. Isaiah chapter 59 and 1, it says, God's hand is not short that he can be saved. Neither is his ear death that he can't hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sin has hid his face from you. If you really want to have a relationship with God, because you, if you're talking to somebody and they're turning their face and they're not listening to you, showing you that they're ignoring you, because that's what the scripture's pretty much saying, God really ain't trying to have nothing to talk to you about or have no conversation until you're asking him to please God, forgive me, God, come into my life and clean me up. And to repent means to turn from it don't, I'm sorry, and Lord, forgive me is, is pretty much you saying, right. I'm sorry about what you caught me doing or what they said. I did. I'm guilty, but I will go back and do it again if I get the chance. But to repent means to turn from. So if you really want a sincere right. relationship with God, man, give God all of you, man. Give God all of you, man, and, and fully submit yourself to God. And I promise you, God will begin to open doors in your life. God will begin to do things. And for some of you who are probably talking back to the radio saying, well, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. God bless me. Well, guess what? The Bible also said it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So sometimes when you get blessed, it might be God trying to turn your heart back to him. But then after all of the blessings come and you won't turn back, then all the whoops come as well. That's right, brother. That's right. Man. So, hey, man, before you go, uh, if people want to check out your music, man, they want to book you for a show, uh, or you got an upcoming uh, concert or tour going on, man, leave your information with us. Man, go check me out at metoomusic.com. E-T-O-O music.com. That's Justin. Uh, you go to that website, man. You can get booking forms. You can book me. You can go in there. You can you can buy the CD. You can get the hard copy of the CD, or you can get the digital download exclusively from those sites. Uh, you can go to uh, metoomusic.com slash the source. You can also get it from there. You can check me out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Justin Shaw Senior, or I, you can go to my other page if you want to be my friend. One of my pages is full. I got several pages, so you can go to this page, Justin Shaw. Uh, Justin Jamel Shaw Senior, Facebook.com at just, uh, Justin Jamel Shaw Senior. That's my second page. Then you can check me out on Twitter at Shawboy S H A W B O Y seven four Senior. You can take, do the same thing on. Uh, you can check me on Instagram as well. It's Justin Shaw Senior at Justin Shaw Senior on Instagram. So those are the places you can check me out. I've got a Periscope account as well. So you can check me out. Find me on all of those different places, man. Go to YouTube. You can watch the video on YouTube or Facebook. We already up at like 14, over 14,000, almost 15,000 views on Facebook, man. So, you know, like I said, man, God is really blessing. So y'all go check it out, man. Go get that album. Go to get the glory man, right now. Oh, man, that's good, man. And also, man, you got to throw one of those uh, bow ties on it, too, man. <laughs> oh, man, for sure. It's, it's bow tie, no tie. You know what I mean? We some bow tie, no tie, man. You know what I mean? That's what I tell them at the church. You know what I mean? You'll never see me wear a long tie again. It's bow tie, no tie. I'm either wearing no tie or I got the bow tie on. One of the two. Uh, hey, right, right, man. Well, y'all heard it first, man, by Minister Justin Shaw, man. He's putting it down right here on the Terry Price Show. It's going down. Man, brother... Man, we're going to have to talk off-air, on-air, whatever, man. we got to keep in contact 
if you got anything going on where you at, man, uh, just man, just connect with me, man. Um, if I'm gonna try my best to come out that way, support what you're doing, man. And uh, man, we just we just gonna keep chopping it up, bro. For sure, for sure, man, for sure. All right, right. Man. Stay with me, man. For real, stay in touch. Hey, I will, I will, man. Hey, I thank you for your time, man. Thank you for uh, calling into the Terry Price Show, man. We're gonna we're gonna really stay connected, man. I ain't gonna just tell you that, but I'm gonna send you some, uh, you know, send you my information, man, and just let me know what you got going on, man. We're gonna try our best to get you to come out here, man, to the Dallas Fort Worth right. Metroplex of Texas, and uh, man, we're gonna go from there, man. Yeah, already, man. Matter of fact, you can start working for me in that area, man. Get some shows and stuff booked out there. You know, some churches and people who need me to come to or need anybody for a youth event or anybody to come speak for a youth event, to sing for you. Right. Not just youth events, but half anniversary, whatever it is, man. Just start having to book me, man. All right, I'll be more than happy to. I'll be more than happy, to, and I say this over the air, man. I'll be more than happy to give you that ten percent managerial fee. <laughs> hey, man, don't do that. <laughs> no problem, don't man. Way, y'all heard me say it. Y'all heard me say it. I'm gonna get a man the ten percent managerial fee over the air. Anything he can book, he get the ten percent managerial fee. I heard it live on the radio. I yeah. did it. Tell we got it. We, we got it on record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on record. I said it. You know what I mean? Already, already. Well, man, hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Love you, bro. And, uh, man, I'm going to be working on that, man, since the summertime is really taking off. Uh, I'm going to be working on that, man. So, uh, man, you just stay blessed, man. Um, may the most high in Christ bless you and your family. And, uh, man, y'all just keep doing what y'all doing for Christ. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. To God be the glory, man. You be blessed, man. Thank you for having me on, bro. All right. Thank you, man. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all heard it first right here on the Terry Price Show. That's Minister Jeff Yo, Shaw, man. Boy, you know, that wait, video you don't know. Going live from uh, my robbery. Going it's here. a bomb. Wait, you tune into the Terry Price Show. Twitter, Let's go. Google. It is Jesus. Y'all make sure you guys connect with me, man. We're going to try to bring this young man down to the guys before we're listening, man. I just want to say thank you for tuning in to the show. Make sure that you go to the official website and you like the know. Uh, all you gotta do is go to www.com and go down. And we just gonna keep doing what we're doing for the Lord, man. Y'all make sure that y'all just stay easy, be careful, and uh, get some of that dinner, man. It's getting late, the time is 340 p.m. Pacific Saturday time. But I just wanna say, uh, God bless you, man. Thank you for tuning in to the show. Y'all make sure that y'all just stay safe, stay healthy, 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 stay healthy,